Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And I am playing New York, New York by uh, Frank Sinatra for a reason, because Mr. New York, we are hoping will become Mr. America, Donald Trump will be with us on this program. Sometime over the next couple of hours, we're waiting and seeing. Uh, for those of you who don't know what's going on and why Trump is surging, and as I predicted last week, I told you this. I told you this, and the latest poll shows that Trump is leading the GOP field among Hispanics, and I told you that it would happen, and I told you why it would happen. Trump recorded a 34% favorability rating among Hispanics in a national poll conducted by public policy polling, among 1,087 registered voters. Now, remember, registered voters are, are a lot different than the typical poll done by the left-wing fake polls. And why would Donald Trump, who the left-wing fanatics will tell you uh, is not liked by Hispanics, why is he polling so well amongst Hispanics? There's a reason. Because poor people who are working hard understand that a man with money knows something about money. And they know that socialists destroy income. That's why they fled their countries. They know what socialism brings. They know that socialism denudes a nation of progress. And they know that progressives denude a nation of progress. They want the opposite of what the phony progressives in the media are telling you. They don't want that. They don't want a, a government handout necessarily. Some do. We know that. But if you open your eyes to what's going on in your country as I do, because unlike most in the media... And I would say 99% of the media don't do what I do. I travel around and I look and I talk. I talk to the busboys. I talk to the waiters. I talk to the welders. I talk to the carpenters. I talk to the roofers. And I know who they are and I know what they want. And let me tell you something. They're not all diehard anti-Americans. Just get it clear. So when I say that the latest poll shows that Trump leads the GOP field amongst Hispanics with a 34% favorability, while Bush the phony has a 31, Cruz 30, Rubio 29. They thought Rubio, because he had a Hispanic name, would suddenly be their candidate. It's not working. Walker 26, Carly 25, Christie 21, and Huckabee and Carson down at 16. I don't even want to read the rest of the list. So and it's an important story, a very important story. Here's another important story. And this is a shocker to me. Trump will be with us, as I said to you, and I'm going to ask him, I think, some important questions. Uh, I like Trump. I would vote for Trump. Nobody's going to give you 100% on the dollar. Let me tell you that right now. Let me start with that. There's not a man alive who was, who's going to give us 100% of what we want. Nobody. And I don't like the purists who are saying because he's this, the that, the that, the da, 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 I'm not voting for him. Well, who are you going to vote for? Francis the talking mule? You're looking for an impossibility. You got to take the best you can get. He's the best we can get, period. And here's something that bothers me. The the Koch brothers, the re, the the revered Koch brothers of the of the right and I respect what they do, have frozen Donald Trump out of their empire. They want nothing to do with him. The Koch brothers are freezing out Trump from their influential political operation, denying him access to their state-of-the-art data, and refusing to let him speak to their gatherings of grassroots activists or major donors. This is in Politico by uh, Ken, Kenneth Vogel and Kate Martell. Despite a long and cordial relationship between uh, Donald Trump and David Koch, uh, as well as a raft of former Koch operatives who are now running Trump's campaign, the Koch, why can't I say cock? It was Mayor Koch, wasn't it? Mayor Koch? It's a d difficult name, I'm sorry. German names don't translate well into English. Uh, we'll say Koch. The Koch political operation appears to have concluded that Trump is the wrong standard bearer for the GOP. That's very unfortunate because there is no GOP. Oh, there is a GOP, but it doesn't represent America. It represents the special interests that have destroyed America. As I've said to you before, the GOP is simply for the GOP. That's why we have a crybaby like John Boehner running the GOP. 
The man belongs in a nut house, not running the GOP. Weeps every uh, gives an interview on the golf channel. He starts breaks down in tears. What kind of country are we living in? Where there's no loyal opposition. There's no opposition whatsoever. Now here's something that I found this morning. That I found very intriguing. And uh, we know there are smear. There's a smear campaign against Trump. Just as there's been a smear campaign against me for 21 years, and anyone who is truly a borders language culture man is smeared by the vermin on the left, smeared by the salenterates, misquoted, things made up about us, and that's how they've gotten this imposter into the White House. That's how they got the imposter into the White House, and all of these really tough, rough-and-tumble reporters who are trying to smear Trump have nothing to say about Obama's numerous scandals. Not one word about Obama's wrecking the nation on a daily level, on a daily basis. What are the five things Obama has done most damaging to America? I can name 15 to 20. I can spell it out for you in 325 pages, as I have done in my last bestseller, Stop the Coming Civil War. But don't bother reading any of that because it wasn't written by one of the approved writers on the uh, reading list. There's a word that came out that I think is important. It came out, uh, and I have to read this carefully. It's by David Wiegel of the Washington Post. Late last week, a neologism was born. Twitter was the incubator, he writes. Conservative, a portmanteau of conservative and cuckold. That means a man whose wife has cheated on him. Burned up Twitter as fans of Donald Trump's politicking warred with the movement conservatives who opposed it. And then name some of these uh, individuals who I've never heard of. They're fill-in hosts for certain shows. I never heard of them. But they're considered conservatives, and they don't like Trump, I guess. What is conservativism? And again, I'm quoting. And he says, I'll defer to Richard Spencer, president of the White Nationalist National Policy Institute. So it sounds like a ne it's neo-Nazism to me. White Nationalist National Policy Institute? They're no different than La Raza. La Raza is a black supremacist group. La Raza, which has been running the domestic policy on immigration in the Obama administration from the get-go, Cecilia Munoz, M-U-N-O-Z, I don't have to read it because I know it, I know who she is. She was invited into the White House to destroy America, to wreck America, to flood America, to swamp America, to sink us all in the lifeboat called America. One-fifth of the population of El Salvador is now living in the United States of America because of Cecilia Munoz and Aslan and Barack Obama. Lots of damage. Can anyone fix it? I don't know. And so, this is a weird word, and they say it's a full-scale revolt by identitarians. I never heard of that. I've heard of vegetarians. I've heard of libertarians. I've never heard of identitarians. But identitarians oppose the Republican Party and the conservative movement. And the slur is vulgar, yes, but then piercingly accurate. They say it is the cuckold who, whether knowingly or unknowingly, loses control of his future. And he writes, this is an apt psychological portrait of white conservatives whose only identity is comprised of vague abstract values and who are participating in the displacement of European Americans, their own children. I disagree with this completely, by the way. And let me tell you why, because when I began a radio 21 years ago, I declared myself a compassionate conservative before it was stolen by George Bush, who ran with it. If you remember, he got elected because of me. I don't care whether you agree with me or not. It's a fact. It doesn't matter whether it's noted or recorded by red state or pink state or white state. It doesn't matter. The savage nation knows I used that phrase all through the 90s, long before Bush came along. Bush, too. I had conventions called Compassionate Conservative Conventions here in the San Francisco area, and thousands and thousands of people know that that was the progenitor of the Tea Party. They know that as well. I don't need anyone to confirm that as well. I don't care whether it appears in the media. All I care about is you, the listener. It's all that matters. You, listening to the speakers or those with earbuds at work who should be working instead of listening to me, you're the ones who matter. You, build a, you built a savage nation. Now, why am I talking about the word, the phrase, Compassionate Conservative? Do you know why? Because when I created it, when I entered radio in 1994 on a local station, KSFO in San Francisco, I defined myself as a, a compassionate conservative. They said, well, what is that? 
I said, well, I stand for borders, language, and culture. But I have a distinct firewall between my conservatism and racism. And to me, borders, language, and culture does not define race, nor does race define borders, language, and culture. It's open to all. It is open to all who love America. You hear what I just said to you? All who are here legally, I might add. And so when I see things like this appearing all of a sudden, I realize it's another hit piece on Donald Trump. And if they're going to make it based upon simply race, they're going to lose the election completely. Because this is never going to play in this country at this time, never. Never. If you consider yourself a white conservative whose only identity is comprised of uh, saving the nation for European Americans, you're really part of the dustbin of history. It's that simple. Unless you understand the nation is bigger than your race, you're going to go nowhere. You're going to be consigned to the dustbin of history. This nation is bigger than race. It always has been. This nation is about borders, language, and culture, which I will define as the show goes on. This is the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855 400 7282. Why is the media not saying one word about Obama's wrecking of the, na of the nation? What are the five things Obama has done most damaging to America? And can anyone, including Donald Trump, ever fix what he has done? And here is the first question. I'm going I'm to give you a preview. Are you ready? Here is the first question I'm going to ask Donald Trump when he comes on the show. And I hope his staff is listening. I didn't send him any questions. Donald and I have a conversation when he comes on the show which is just two guys talking, frankly. You know that. It's a free-flowing conversation. But I'm going to ask him this question. Would you use an executive action to establish strict voter ID in the United States of America? Would you be willing to state to my audience tonight on the Savage Nation that you will use an executive action in the first week of your presidency to establish strict voter ID in the United States of America? And the reason I'd ask that is simple, because I want to copy Mexico. You see all you leftists? To vote in Mexico, every eligible Mexican has to have a tamper-proof photo ID card with a thumbprint and an embossed hologram. You see, to vote in Mexico, all of you progressives, all citizens are required to personally enroll and show proof of birth or citizenship. And all you progressives, if you want to vote in Mexico, you need to personally return to collect your voting credential. And all you progressives should understand that if we want a legitimate candidate in the United States of America, we need to upgrade to Mexican standards because the Democrat Party is dependent entirely, in my opinion, on voter fraud. That is how they've taken over state by state, strictly through voter fraud. And that means illegals voting. That means New Yorkers voting both in Florida and New York as many times as they wish. That means students voting as often as they wish. That is how the illegitimate Democrat, Socialist, Islamist Party has gotten where they are. They do not represent the majority of Americans. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be back with more right here on your local station. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Of the millions of people who listen to this show weekly, there are 34 Savagettes, and I've got to keep the women listening to the show, so I play soft rock and roll to make certain they don't get upset and switch to NPR run by the Obama administration. National Obama Radio. This just came to me. Feds, 664,607 illegals granted amnesty, some linked to terrorism and gangs. Washington Examiner. Obama's going to produce 400,000 work permits each month. The criminal administration is going to produce 400,000 work permits a month. The criminal gang that runs America is ready to produce 400,000 work permits a month. The gang that took over America while you slept is ready to produce 400,000 work permits a month. WJR Marco, ahead please. Please, if you're not there, I'm going to hang up on you. Goodbye. 
Line two, Lena, KBOI Radio. Lena, make your point quickly. What's on your mind? Uh, the Koch brothers, uh, I believe they're behind the funding of the large immigration centers. And, of course, that's not going to work well with uh, uh, Trump coming out against him. But why would the Koch brothers be behind massive illegal immigration into this nation? Why? Because, because they're making money. They're the ones that have the money behind the large centers where they have the soccer fields and the TVs. And they're putting wait, are you saying they're... Wait, hold it. I've been railing against the phony charities, Catholic charities, Baptist family services, Jewish family services, that have been making hundreds of millions of dollars a year on the illegals in transporting them, housing them, clothing them, providing medication. I said it's very much like the mafia in Italy. I read that the mafia in Italy is in the immigration care business, that there's more money than smuggling drugs. Is that what you're suggesting right now, that the big money is in illegal aliens? That's exactly where it is. I, re I read this when the, uh, uh, months ago when these centers were being built, and then it came out, well, who, who built the centers? Who had the land? Who, who, somebody had to buy it. It was the Koch well, I Look, let's start with this. I can't confirm or deny that the Koch brothers are building these centers. Let's start with that. You're a random caller. You sound like a nice lady, but I don't know where you read that. I've got to check it out, okay? Okay, let's check it out. I'm sorry. All right, let's check it out. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. Don't know. But how come we're not talking about Obama's attacks upon the sovereignty of America? Why is this brave media not saying one word about Obama and his minions wrecking the nation and about to grant a nuclear weapon to Iran, a terrorist nation? Where's the story about that instead of Donald Trump's hairdo? Obama is committing treason on the deal with Iran. Everybody knows that, except the progressives who... Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. I'm right, not off the music. I'm not in the mood for rock and roll. No rock and roll, please. Play Romstein later on. Not, not rock and roll. I'm not in the mood. So everyone's attacking Trump, except those of us who know he's the only chance we have. He's the standard bearer of the American conservative movement. That's the reality. I know he's not perfect. I know he doesn't pass the, the litmus test of the, you know, the, the true constitutional conservatives for whom nobody is good enough. The popes of the conservative movement have said he doesn't meet the, uh, the, the qualifications to represent them. Well, who does? Who does? Where is he? What do you think, George Washington is going to come back with wooden teeth on a white horse? You know, he's the best we got right now. And the best evidence I have that he's the real McCoy is that the Koch brothers have frozen out Donald Trump. They've stiffed on him. And they won't let him build a professional campaign operation. Why? Why are the Koch brothers freezing out Donald Trump from their influential political operation? Why are they denying him access to their state-of-the-art data and refusing to let him speak to the gatherings of grassroots activists or major donors? Why is Michael Savage allowing Donald Trump to speak to my gatherings of grassroots roots activists and, and donors? And that's another issue. You know, here's one that I'm going to ask him. Why has he not set up a donation page yet? All the other candidates, every day I get a, every day, Scott Walker. Send Scott Walker a dollar, a dime, a jelly roll. If you have a straw, send it to him. If you have a shoe, a sandal, send it to Ruby. Every day I get this garbage. I haven't gotten anything from uh, the Trump campaign. I know he's a wealthy man. But whatever he's worth, this is going to cost him a billion dollars at least. A billion, a billion and a half. That's my number. I think the price of a Senate seat now is $200 million. That's the cost to buy a seat in the, in the, uh, in the, in the circus called the Senate. About $200 million to buy a major Senate seat in a major city. The last I checked. That's what it cost, I think, for Feinstein's seat is about 200 mil. So I'm guessing it costs about a bill, a billion, a billion and a half to be a president. That's the price of a seat in the White House today. But, <clears throat> hey, that's a lot of money. And I'm sure he could raise a lot of money from the listeners, are not only on this show, but all the people who think he's the only hope we have. And why is Trump so popular? Is it simply because he went to the border and he said, that we have a problem with illegal immigration? Is that is that a crime? He didn't say all Mexicans are rapists. You know that. You know he didn't say that. I know the quote because I have it. He said some of them are, and it's true. 
It's true, for God's sakes. The Mexicans themselves were afraid of them. So we're not, oh, they're all coming into work and they're all sterling citizens. Do you understand what's going on in this country? And now Obama's bringing in Syrian Muslims along with Muslims from Somalia unvetted. Somali Muslims are being brought in, becoming street gang members. One sheriff in America said something about Somalis two years ago. The sheriff, the excuse me, the, the uh, police chief of San Francisco about two years ago dared say that he's worried about Somali refugees being brought to America, mainly San Francisco, because many of them are rec being recruited into ISIS. They almost threw him out of his job. Two days later, we read the FBI is worried about the very same thing. So the answer is we've got to do something. The problem is out of control. Obama has destroyed our borders, our language, and our culture. Somebody has to stand up to him. Somebody has to stand up to the, uh, the flood. Somebody has to do it. And we're hoping that Trump is for real. We are hoping so. And the best evidence that he is for real is that the Koch brothers uh, are against him. Now, why are they against him? A caller said, well, they're in the business of caring for the illegal aliens. They have building the centers. But there's something else you should know about them that's really pretty amazing. Are you ready for this? Well, they're into prison reform. That's interesting. Why are they into prison reform? That's interesting. Who isn't for prison reform? Well, Obama is. But does Coke Industries, do they have private prisons? I'd like to know that. The Kochs say they're concerned about mass incarceration, too many criminal laws, a system that disproportionately weighs on the poor and minorities, and that they're going to focus on criminal justice reform. Well, that sounds noble. That's very noble of them. The overcriminalization in America, that is a problem. We have too many people in prison. There's no question about it. I've said that for years. I don't disagree with that. But are they in the b business of building private and owning private prisons? What are the Koch brothers into? Huh? I mean, they're into immigration reform. I know that. So they're into amnesty, but why? Why are they into amnesty? And that, that would explain why they're opposed to Trump. Okay, so I have the callers, 855-407-282. While we're getting you on the line, there's some good news for you out there, uh, those of you who think the world is coming to an end because of the mass hysteria created by Al Gore and the gangsters in the climate um, business. The, you know, Climate Inc. is now more important than Crime Inc. Do you know that Climate Inc. today is bigger than Murder Incorporated was in its own day? Climate Inc. has taken in more money than the old five families in New York ever took in in their life. So I have good news for you, all of you doomsayers. Prince Charles extends Climate Doomsday deadline by 33 years. I'm not making this up. He's always been an idiot. Prince Charles is warning that there are only 35 years left to save the planet from climate disaster, which represents a 33-year extension of his previous deadline. In March of 2009, the lunatic with big ears, who you know is the heir to the British throne, an inbreed, predicted that the world had 100 months before, quote, we risk catastrophic climate change. And now he's giving us a reprieve. He extends the 100-month climate tipping point to 35 more years says the Tuesday deadline on the Climate Depot website. Can you believe this man? He gave us a reprieve. Prince of Wales said in a speech in Rio de Janeiro uh, back then that the best projections tell us that we have less than 100 months to alter our behavior before we risk catastrophic climate change. And he predicted that the Earth only had 96 months left to avoid, quote, irretrievable climate and ecosystem collapse and all that goes with it. Well, Jerry Brown just said the same thing in Italy. I guess he was reading an old speech from the prince as Jerry Brown flew there on a private jet and went to his air-conditioned limousine. What a bunch of liars. By the way, the global mean temperature has not increased for more than 18 years, a phenomenon referred to by scientists as the pause. Can you believe this? This is how far we have fallen as a nation, that you have gangsters posing as scientists who is simply in it for the for the federal money, the gravy, the gravy tr gravy train. So I'm giving you good news today. Prince Charles has just extended the climate doomsday deadline that he gave by 33 years. So you can all breathe easily. We have 33 years left before we all die. WABC, Patty, thank you for calling from New York City. Give me uh, your opinion on what's going on here. 
Well, you asked the question, what's the worst thing that Obama's done? And as someone who lives in the belly of the beast here in New York, I can say without a doubt, it's bringing in all of these illegals of every stripe, every debauchery, whatever. It's totally turned our country into something that I don't recognize. Isn't that how de Blasio got elected in New York? Absolutely. Isn't it through, isn't it through the illegal alien vote? that he got elected the same, in my opinion, as Fo Boxer, Feinstein, Jerry Brown. California has become a despotic one-party system because the unions hijacked our vote by demanding, A, no voter ID, and B, flooding our, voter, a poll, flooding our votes with illegal alien votes. That's how they've taken over California. That's how they've taken over New York. That's how they've taken over Chicago. That's exactly what's going on. And not only that, but here in New York, briefly, he has given them now these fake identity cards so that they can get all these benefits with even less trouble. He streamlined the process. I mean, I'll tell you something. Well, and this is how demagogue. This is how demagogues operate. This is what De Blasio and Obama are. They're demagogues. They are left-wing fanatical demagogues, right out of the third world, right in front of our eyes. In New York, any terrorist. Who, who would like to hide out, just go down to Manhattan, maybe drive a cab. You would, they could hide in clear sight. New York, Manhattan today. Are you implying that all cab drivers are secretly terrorists, Patty? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But because if you are, be careful. The thought police will come and find you. I am not. I would never say such a thing. But what I'm saying is, as I walk around downtown, and, you know, I'm born, unlike most of them down there, I was born there. And well, you're, you're a born. Are you a natural Manhattanite? Yes. Yep. You know that. You know that I am as well. I'm one of the few left in the whole world. We like the la we like the last of the Manhattanos. You, I cannot tell you how fantastic I. I you. Do you know how alienated I am living in San Francisco most of my adult life? Do you know how it is to live amongst psychotic lunatics who are digging their own graves and throwing lime in the pit? At the same time, do you know what it's like to try and talk to these 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 zombies who are destroying their own nation in the under the guise of being nice people? They have no idea what they're doing to their children, their children's children. Of course, most of them have no children. That that's the thing to remember. But that's a separate discussion. A lot of what's happening in America is a result of the fact that the family is dead. Absolutely. And pe and people do not think for their children or their children's children. They think only of their personal vanity and their pleasure. So they don't think beyond that moment. And as a result, the country is being stolen right out from under their eyes. Even worse than All right, look, we, we can complain about this day and, night, day and night. It's not going to get us anywhere. So your number one problem with Obama is him flooding America with illegal aliens, changing the voter rolls. And, of course, the case in point that you're using is New York, but a, a, more, a more current case is Virginia which uh, the story came up the other day on the Drudge Report from three different sources, and also the fact that one-fifth of the population of El Salvador is now living in the United States of America. Can you believe that that's what's happened to our country? Can you believe any nation on earth would permit this? No, and that's why Trump is surging. It's that simple. 855-400-7282. Donald Trump will be here shortly if you've just tuned in. And I would say that my opening monologue was 13 of the best minutes I've done in a very long time. It was flawless. There was not a pause. There was not a statement I made that I regret. There's not a, a thing I would take out of it in a transcript. I liked it. And I am going to get an MP3 of it and put it up on michaelsavage.com at some point. But I liked the calls until Donald Trump gets here uh, with your opinions of Donald. And I'll take Todd on KSFO in San Francisco. Todd, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Yeah, Dr. Savage, I apologize. I don't mean to call and be a, a naysayer about Donald Trump, but I don't trust the man. Um, numbers U.S. Well, first of all, to be fair to the discussion, you're not alone. There's a lot of doubt out there, as there is for any candidate. We all don't trust politicians to begin with and anyone running. We don't know whether to believe them. But wh where, what are your doubts based on? Well, uh... Initially, it started with his transition from Democrat to Independent to Republican with zero explanation and, in, and zero uh, uh, questions in the media uh, over this. I don't understand why nobody's asking him. You know, uh, Ronald Reagan gave a great explanation why he left the Democrat Party. They left him. Uh, I don't hear anything out of this guy. Um, his amnesty deal, 
yesterday a poll or a, uh, um, a independent uh, rating company called Numbers USA came. Yes, yes, I saw. I saw that they gave him a low rating on on, on immigration, right? Right. And to me, but uh, you know, look, here's the thing, Todd. Here's the problem. Who would you vote for? Who's better than Trump on the Republican side and who could actually beat Hillary Clinton if she's the front runner, which I don't think she's going to be. I think Hillary Clinton is the Zeppelin of our time. She is the Hindenburg of our time. That Zeppelin is already there's a spark inside that Zeppelin and that hydrogen's about to blow. She's finished. I don't think she's going to make it to the finish line. Liberals don't trust her. Liberals don't like her. I don't think she's going to be the finish at the finish line. But let's say there is a major league Democrat candidate, whoever it may be, who could defeat them? Scott Walker. Scott Walker. Mm, the I was originally for Scott Walker, but I've I've gotten cold feet with Scott Walker. You know, I, I got a little cold. I mean, he's sort of a lackluster guy. He's got good policies. But I don't see him breaking out of the pack. How is he going to break out of the pack? He doesn't seem to have any charisma. He hasn't. He hasn't been in a debate yet, and he doesn't. He's a. He's a. He walks. Well, wait a minute. Donald Trump hasn't been in a debate, but he's broken out of the pack for one reason. He's loud. He's in your face, and he's got charisma. He's got the very thing America needs to take on the Islamists. By the way, let's not forget the little sneaky problem of the Islamization of America and the world. Let's not forget the fact that Islamists have been at war with the world for a thousand years, and this is not not something new, nor is it going away. And we need someone with charisma who is going to rebuild the military and give us pride again. And Donald Trump is the lion to give us pride again. I'm sorry to use such a poor analogy after Cecil was killed uh, and, and hurt us all, as I've been covering for three days. Of course, I covered the Cecil story before anyone else did because I'm a true animal uh, rights supporter. I've donated a lot of money to gorilla funds, elephant funds, etc. And it's sad to see that Jimmy Kimmel, a phony through and through, an Obama bootlicker, gets the credit for uh, making the story the story it is. It's sickening. But I know my audience knows me and the animals, but Donald Trump is the lion who can roar against the Islamists and against these other forces threatening to swamp this nation. That That's an important thing, uh, Todd, which is to have someone who has the charisma and someone who has the ego and someone who has the guts, frankly, to stand up to, to, to these other forces. And so I don't know where he stands on amnesty. You actually think he's for amnesty, Todd? Yeah, I mean, you don't say, well, we're going to keep the good ones, we're going to keep the bad ones. How are you? That, that's BS. How are you going to do that? That's impossible. Well, it's, I'll tell you how you do it, because I've, I've spelled it out in several of my books, including my forthcoming bestseller in October entitled Government Zero. You begin with what you can begin with. The prisons in our country have a population of illegals that numbers at about 30%. That means about one out of all three... One out of three prisoners is an illegal alien. I would begin by deporting the criminal illegals in our prison system. Take out the illegals and deport them. And if the country doesn't want them, it's too bad. Dump them there and leave them there and make these criminals their problem, wherever they came from. Now, if you start by deporting the criminal illegal aliens, don't you think that that would set up a suction going south? Don't you think that would set up a suction going south? And don't you think it would also deter further criminals from crossing the border? So I would start by emptying the prisons of illegal aliens. I would fortify the border patrol. I would arm them with whatever they need to defend our borders against the gangs. I'd give them armored personnel carriers. I'd give them automatic weapons. I'd give them helicopters. Whatever they need to secure our border. I think that's a good enough start. And I think it would send a very strong message to the other individuals who are in the nation who might be marginal to pack their bags and go home. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know... Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to our number two of The Savage Nation. Donald Trump will be with us. It's confirmed now in this hour. And I want to talk about who makes billions off the illegal aliens. I followed the money. I'm the only one who's done this. I've done the job of 60 minutes. 60 minutes won't do what I'm doing for you. I am doing something for you in the next 10 minutes that nobody in the media has ever done. I followed the money. I will tell you, I will disclose for you who makes billions off the illegal aliens. Now you're going to say, how did you do this, Michael? You're a one-man operation. Where'd this come from? Well, guess what? It's all in my forthcoming book, Government Zero. Now, I know I should not disclose this now and let others pick it up and put it into their books or on their shows. But I feel that this subject of illegal aliens is so great. I feel America is being stolen from us so rapidly that you have to understand why it's happening. And then maybe something will be done to stop it. You see, Trump is being smeared around the clock by cowards who ignore the evils of the Obama administration. And I feel that the media must tell us about the swamping of America by illegal aliens and who's behind this, meaning why is it happening? You think it's about compassion? Do you really believe that progressives love Ethiopians? Do you really believe that progressives can't wait to embrace a Somali and take her home for uh, some tea? Do you actually believe they can't wait to welcome a Syrian into their apartment in New York City? Are you crazy? No, that's not the reason. But I followed the money. Who makes billions off the illegal aliens? Unfortunately, Government Zero will not be out until October, but you can probably find it on Amazon. Let me begin. I followed the money. And I'm going to read it to you from my forthcoming book. I found that who's behind this immigration crisis. There was an article all over the media a few months ago about the luxury hotels being rehabbed for the illegal alien children. Obama to pay illegals and offer all-you-can-eat meals, free cable TV, lawyers, medical and dental, close quote, on a 29-acre complex that ICE probably showed off to the media uh, that week. It was a renovated detention center for illegal alien families in Carnes City, Texas. And so criminals in the hedge fund business saw an opportunity. And the sharks, the anti-American vermin on Wall Street moved in. And they converted a detention center into a money-making center, a profit-making center. Where's the money coming from? Who are the contractors? Who are the contractors that are making and are going to make billions of dollars off the illegal alien amnesty surge that Obama is causing, in this case, the children from Central America. Somebody's making money off this, I said, because we found the RFP that was put out for housing and clothing and feeding these children. I actually found the RFP, the Request for Proposals. That's how the government issues contracts. They put out an RFP, and allegedly there is a bidding contest, and the government had been pl plotting to bring in all of these children for at least a year. I figured someone was making a fortune on it, but I didn't know who. So I wake up and I found out that these children in these detention centers were going to get flat screen TVs. Are you listening to me? If you're a poor American, do you have a beauty parlor at your disposal for free? Do you have a flat screen TV? Do you have free lawyers, free doctors, free dentists? Do you have a workout gym in your poor community? Do you have a swimming pool in your community? Do you have a soccer field in your housing complex? Well, Obama gave them all of these things. All of these things. So I said, wait a minute. Somebody's making a fortune off of this. A $50 million federal government contract to house illegal aliens at another facility that was blocked, blocked to the press, and yet they're moving them in there? Many of the rooms are suites from a former hotel. You heard me. Private toilets for the illegals, private showers, flat screen TVs, cable TV, soccer fields. You get the picture, right? Well, guess what? Some people are getting rich off the billion dollar immigration surge, and they're not all Democrats. This is all from Government Zero, which will be out in October. I'm reading it to you. I'm giving it away. Someone's going to steal this book. So I'll be Abby Hoffman for the moment. I'm used to it. Go ahead, make my day, steal it. Only a handful of U.S. corporations have the honor of long-term contracts with federal agencies that deal with the immigration problem. It's a closed shop. And for these companies 
The latest surge from Guatemala and El Salvador, that was last summer, has meant big profits, big business. And Obama's pushing for emergency funding for so-called family detention centers like the one in Texas. Resorts, they are, soccer fields with artificial turf, lighting, flat screen TVs, pools, amenities you might get on a vacation once a year if you had the money. So why are you and I spending so much money on those who break our laws? The answer is because of profiteers, who I will name in a moment. You see, every television, every desk lamp, every blade of fake soccer grass has a huge markup to it. You heard about the $32 aspirin in hospitals, right? Well, that's nothing compared to what these companies are making in these illegal alien detention facilities. It's connected to the companies that run prisons for profit. Did you know that? Did you know any of this? Have any of the candidates told you this? Prisons for profit? Did you know about them? Well, I, Michael Savage, dug into the particulars of one such company that's making a profit off the immigrant surge. It's called the GEO Company. Who are they? In the past six years, GEO was awarded $900 million in ICE contracts alone, according to government data procured by Source US and delivered to you for free right here on the Savage Nation. This will be published in my book, Government Zero. Now, who was the parent company of GEO? I'll tell you that in a few minutes. Before I go back to this disclosure, something that is worthy of a 60 Minutes piece, but you won't hear about it. You won't see it on Fox News. You won't see it on the Drudge Report because I, Michael Savage, am the black sheep of the media. And ba ba black sheep, I don't give a damn. Let me tell you something. I've always been a loner, and I will always be a loner, and I'm proud of it. That's why I'm an independent and always have been. And so let me continue for a moment with a slight digression. I am an immigrant son. I am the only talk show host in the United States of America, maybe the only major media figure in the United States of America who is the son of an actual immigrant. Did you know that? You didn't know any of that. My father came here. Uh, my, excuse me. My grandfather came here. My father came here when he was eight years old. I was born here. Does that give me a halo? No, but it gives me an insight into both worlds. I have one foot in the old world, one foot in the immigrant world, and one foot in the American world. I know how immigrants think, and I know the struggles of immigrants. So don't throw me into the category of those that you despise, because I can guarantee you that the progressives are more elitist than I am. This I can guarantee you, that your good liberal hipster friends really hate your guts if you're an immigrant. So let me continue. Who are these corporate uh, profiteers. Who is the parent company of GEO Corporation? Wackenhut Corporation. Well, wait a minute. Who are they? Well, it turns out Wackenhut Corporation owns a lot of private prisons, and they then funded the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. Did you know about ALEC? You didn't hear about ALEC except on Michael Savage. Well, what is ALEC? What do you mean the American Legislative Exchange Council? Who are they? Well, what they are is a lobbying group. They tell your elected officials, elected officials what to vote on. They tell the elected officials where to eat, what to breathe and how to operate. They run the country. Are you ready for this? Because what I'm about to tell you will change your view of politics for the rest of your life. Who is on the American Legislative Exchange Council? Who runs ALEC behind all of these resorts for illegal aliens? Well, I have the names because you wanted to know the answers. You're not going to hear it from Martha Washington until I tell it to you. And then one of her producers will copy it down and present it to Martha. And she'll cross her legs and you'll think that she gave it to you first. But now that Glenn Beck is on vacation, he can't steal it. Nobody can steal it except you. Take it and run with it. The top shareholders include people you have never heard of. It's actually an international organization. You see, they own facilities in the United Kingdom, Australia, South Africa, and the US. And the top shareholders are George Zoli, John Bolfin, Norman Carlson, Thomas Wirdsma, and Jorge Dominicis. I don't know who they are, but maybe some of their hedge funds or their hedge funds related to them may be familiar to you. Because if you have money in any of these hedge funds, they likely have money in the GEO group that owns the holding facilities for the illegal alien children, BlackRock Fund Advisors, Credit Suisse, River Road Asset Management, LLC, Eagle Asset Management, Inc., Scopia Capital Management, LLC, Carlson Capital.
LP, BlackRock Institutional Trust Company, Hotchkiss and Wiley Capital Management, Vanguard Group, Inc. Well, you say there's nothing wrong. It's not illegal. Well, don't assume I'm saying there's anything illegal in what they're doing. I didn't say that. I'm just telling you, follow the money. So let me go down the list. Maybe you have mutual funds and you like the few percent you're making every year or whatever you're making. Well, they're also profiting from the illegal alien surge in America. You may think you're a rock rib Republican or a conservative and you don't want the illegals coming here, but you like your hedge funds and you like your mutual funds. Well, you're profiting as well. You maybe say you're a conservative and you're against illegal aliens. Well, here are the mutual funds that held GEO stock when I investigated it. A one-man show doing more than 60 minutes. And I'm doing it for you every day for 180 minutes. Vanguard Specialized REIT Index Fund. Fidelity Small Cap Discovery Fund. iShares S&P Small Cap ETF. Prudential Jenison Equity Income Fund. Eagle Series Trust Small Cap Growth Fund. I can read the rest of them. You get the picture, right? But I'm not finished yet. I've just gotten started. Who is on the board of directors of GEO Group that is making billions off the illegal aliens that are being given luxury resorts to reside in? And this will explain to you why the Republicans, along with the Democrats, have been lobbying for amnesty in one form or another. I will give you the names momentarily, but just remember one thing, which I've told you for years right here on these airwaves on the Savage Nation. Whenever both parties agree on something, you can count on one thing. The American people are being screwed. Donald Trump, about 34 minutes after the hour, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Michael Savage back here, the son of an immigrant. And by the way, in the next, Donald Trump will be here at the bottom of the hour. Great interview, I'm sure. In the next hour, the third hour, I'm going to play... An immigrant, an immigrant son comes full circle. Something I did aboard a boat last August in New York City on the Hudson River as I looked at Ellis Island. My father, my grandfather came here on steerage and I was on a yacht. An immigrant son comes full circle. I think you're going to love it. But I want to go behind who is on ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, and who makes billions off the illegal aliens. I have about four minutes to finish this expose that would make 60 Minutes proud of itself if they still did investigative journalism. But I've just gotten started. Who is on the board of directors of, of GEO Group that makes billions off the illegals who are being given luxury resorts to reside in? And this will explain why the Republicans, along with the Deems, have been lobbying for amnesty in one form or another. Well, they're not household names, so I won't read them for you. One of them is uh, Norman Carlson, former director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, let me pause right there. The former director of the U.S. Federal Bureau of Prisons is on this private group, GEO. It gets even better. Also on the board is Ann Newman Foreman, former undersecretary of the U.S. Air Force. See, you were told women in the military would be much kinder and gentler. Well, there she is. She left the Air Force, and she's on the board of directors of this organization. She hasn't committed a crime, by the way. It's done by everyone. And look how well they're all doing. This goes along with the liberal credo. They come to do good and they do very well indeed, just like the missionaries in Hawaii. They came to do good and they did very well indeed. That's how the descendants of the missionary families in Hawaii still own the leasehold land generations later. Clarence Anthony, president and CEO of Anthony Government Solutions, Inc., Christopher Wheeler, Julian Wood. These are not household names. You get it? Wait until you hear the punchline because you haven't heard it yet. It's coming right here in the Savage Nation. And if you miss it, it's all in my forthcoming book in October, Government Zero, where it is memorialized forever, which is why you need to buy the book. Who's getting riff, ri who is getting rich off the billion-dollar immigrant surge? Well, those companies, those hedge funds, those other funds. But are you ready for this? Because here it goes. You didn't expect this, but you heard it first on the Savage Nation. The Koch brothers, David and Charles, who are two of the richest people in the world, are key funders of the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. Now you know why Michael Savage has never been invited to speak to that group. Now you know why Donald Trump 
is being uh, ex has been excommunicated by the Koch brothers. I explained to you a few minutes ago what ALEC is and what they do. ALEC is a lobbying group, and they tell legislators how to vote. The Koch brothers are key funders of ALEC, and so there you have it. You thought it was all liberals who wanted amnesty, but now you find out it's very apparent that so-called conservatives, who are now the guiding forces behind the illegal immigration surge that is now going on in this nation, they're behind it because they own these facilities with thousands of unused beds around the nation. And they want you to fill them and pay for them. Big business, big government, and big religion. All one bundle getting paid off your hard labor. Ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Nation, what I've just disclosed to you is worthy of a Pulitzer Prize. But you won't hear it anywhere else until it's stolen from me. And I don't care because at this point in my career, I become, well, what I become. Don't give me credit. Just steal this idea. Run with it because I've just gotten started. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how the putative legalization of marijuana and the liberalization of marijuana laws has emptied out many of the private prisons, which have now too many beds. And so these capitalists have pushed Congress to bring in those illegal aliens by the trainload to fill the beds in many of their privately held detention centers because they make more money than did the druggies. That's the beginning of the Savage Nation today for the 29th of July in the year 2015. We're going to go to a break. Donald Trump will be here. I'll ask him some questions. We'll have, I think, a, a conversation that will lead us somewhere, and we'll see where it goes. Never forget what you just heard in these last two segments. It's fresh. It's original. Who makes billions off the illegal aliens? All I can say is thank God that Glenn Beck is out of the country. That's all I can say. Well, he'd be crying with tears tonight, reading my manuscript, in my opinion. But you'll hear it elsewhere, which is good. But as Lao Tzu said, it doesn't matter who uses your ideas or if you get credit for your ideas. All that matters is that your ideas are being heard. I'm Michael Savage. Be here or be nowhere. Donald Trump coming up. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I am not a journalist. I'm a talk show host. I have opinions. I'm biased, period. End of story. The rest of them all are biased. They don't tell you that, though. I'm for Trump. Point blank. Best choice we have. Donald Trump joins us right now in the Savage Nation. Donald, thank you for being with us. What's on your mind today? Great honor. That's an amazing honor for you to say that is uh, tremendous. I appreciate it, Michael. But Donald, why should I hide it? I mean, people make believe that they're not biased. You know and I know the media is biased one way or the other. They all pretend that they're scientists in a laboratory with a pipette in their mouth. They're all biased. They all have an axe to grind. Look what they're doing to you, smearing you every day with lies. Garbage, pure garbage, where they let Obama get away with virtual murder, give, give the bomb to Iran. Why is the media not saying one word about what Obama is doing to wreck this nation, Mr. Trump? Well, he is doing a terrible job. He's been a terrible president. Uh, the person that likes him most, you know, I always say is Jimmy Carter, because Jimmy's now number two. And uh, it's, uh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And, you know, it, it's, I, I see, Michael, it's been for a long time I've heard you cannot be a very successful person and run for office, especially for president. And I really see it now, and people are actually putting things out. Mark Cuban said it today. He, he was very nice about what I'm doing, amazingly nice. And he said, but it's very hard for somebody that's successful to run because they go after you to a level. And I'm watching. Right. In other, words, in other words, if you have a product, they can attack your products. These other losers have no products. They've never been in business. Michael, I'm watching people that know nothing about me, have nothing to do with me, and all of a sudden they're experts on Donald Trump, and they're talking about me like they know something. They don't have anything. The numbers are wrong. Everything is wrong. It's disgraceful. I mean, it's really... And at least I have the, you know, with the at real Donald Trump, the Twitter stuff, I mean, it's it, at least I can fight back with the Twitter, and you can say, you know, they don't know me, yeah. they never met me, and all of this stuff. But, I but, but Donald, wait a minute. i got to say this. I, last week I said, here's the secret. The Hispanic people in this country who are legal will vote for Trump because they of all people know how hard it is to make a buck and they want a businessman to run the country so they can hold on to what they make. They don't want a socialist stealing their money. And the poll comes out today 
And it shows that you're leading other GOP contenders among Hispanics by a huge margin. It confirms exactly what I suspected. But, Donald, let's be clear. We know that we have a problem with illegals. We know that um, we have illegals voting in this country. We know that to vote in Mexico, every eligible Mexican has to have a tamper-proof photo ID card with a thumbprint and an embossed hologram. Would you use an executive action to establish strict voter ID laws in the U.S. if you became president? Well, you know, something has to be done, and I can't believe it. Where they, talk, they want to take away cards, they want to take away identification. I assume that means somebody could vote ten times. I mean, who the hell is going to know the difference? But, you know, it's incredible when you look. And you speak of Mexico, and I have great, you know, I have so many people from Mexico. They work for me. They're wonderful people. They're great people. And I respect Mexico as a country. The problem is their leaders are too smart for us. They're very cunning, and they're very smart, and they're ripping up. They are ripping off our nation like you've never seen. And very interestingly, if you want to become a citizen of Mexico, it's almost impossible. It's so rigorous. It's so hard to become a citizen. They put you through the grinder, and you just can't do it. And yet in our country, boom, they walk right over the border, and everybody just comes in and has a good time, and we pay for them, whether it's prison or hospitals or anything. I mean, in California, I don't know if you saw the story, almost 50% of the people trying to get, like, applying for driver's licenses are illegals. The whole thing is just insane. So how come, oh. Donald Trump, we can't upgrade to Mexican standards without being called racist? Why is it that we can't require voter ID, tamper-proof photo ID cards with a thumbprint as they have in Mexico? Why is it that we can't have the same stringent immigration rules that they have in Mexico themselves? Do you know what happens when a Guatemalan tries to come into Mexico? You know what, what they do to them. Absolutely. So the people in this country have no idea what reality is because of the media. And they won't say one word about this. Again, I have to go back. Don't you think it's a good idea to use an executive action to establish strict voter ID in the U.S.? I know I don't want to nail you. I don't want to get you to say uh, yes, and then you'll, they'll nail you for that. So, uh, Trump goes on right-wing savage show and says voter ID law. And right away, they start screaming racism. I get it. I know what they do. I know the game. So you I guess you can't. Have identification. You go to a store, you need identification to buy something. You have to have identification. And it's incredible to me that people can fight it. You almost wonder, where do these people come from? Why are they fighting it? And how can we, our side, which is, by the way, I think the big silent majority, if you want to know the truth, how can we lose? And I think that's what's happened. That's why my poll numbers, we just got numbers in. It was just put on my desk as I'm talking to you. In Florida, almost 27% for Trump. Jeb Bush is 20 uh, Marco Rubio is 9.7. He's the sitting senator. The other was a governor of Florida. People are tired of it. You know, you look at these numbers, like in Florida, and I love Florida. I go there all the time. I haven't made a speech in Florida in years, and I'm leading in Florida now, according to this poll. And look. But, Don, Donald, wait a minute. Let, let's be clear. Cal Donald, California is a one party system. The unions in California put Jerry Brown in office, in my opinion. They have kept the Democrat machine running that state the way the Tammany Hall, the way Tammany Hall once ran New York. And I believe the reason we have no voter ID in California and New York and anywhere else is because one party is dependent on voter fraud, and that party is the Democrat Party. I think something needs to be done. Okay, so immigration is one big problem, but there's another big problem, which is our military, which has been decimated under Barack Obama. What about the bomb for Iran? What would you do if you became president? What would you do to stop this pathway to a nuclear weapon? Inconceivable that that deal is being approved, and inconceivable that Chuck Schumer, who I always thought loved Israel, to be honest with you, that he's going to approve it. Because Israel is in such danger now. And the whole Middle East, I mean, look, the place is a total disaster, what's going on in the Middle East. And you look at what's happening, and it's incredible that this could have happened. But Israel is... Wait, wait, uh, Donald, has Schumer come out and said he's going to support it? Well, you know, nobody knows what he's going to do, I think. Nobody knows. And it, actually, I'm surprised that Israel isn't putting tremendous pressure on Schumer, because they do have a lot of power over Schumer. And I can't believe that Schumer is taking the stance. And nobody, I don't think, and really knows. I think most people think he's going to actually support it. You know the amazing thing about that? A couple of amazing things. The 24-day period. What idiot would allow 24 days? And, you know, the 24-day period doesn't start for a long time because they have to go through a whole process before it starts ticking. So they have 24-day period, but it's a lot longer than that. And the other thing, and it's just so simple to understand, are prisoners, where they say, we have four people in there. Let them out. Fellas, you got to let them out. And think of it. These people are in prison 
And Kerry and Obama said they didn't want to mention the prisoners because they didn't want to complicate the negotiation. You say to yourself, what's complicated? You say, hey, by the way, it's good for all of us. Let the prisoners out. Yeah, if you have the right messenger, I guarantee you if that were, those prisoners would be gone. They, they should have been gone at the beginning of the negotiation, not now. It's way late. But they should have been gone right at the beginning. We have four people over there. One's in there because he's a, he's a Christian. Uh, we have four people in the roughest prison, and they've been over there for a long period of time. And we make a deal. And then, of course, you look at all of the different places where we're fighting. They don't want to bring up one thing has nothing to do with the other. And on top of that, we're giving them billions and billions of dollars. i got to tell you, if Iran was a stock, you would buy immediately. You'd make a lot of money. <laughs> Just wait to see what happens. Well, what what Donald see. Trump is referring to is the fact that Kerry Ketchup has given Iran... Uh, a handout, in other words, Iran is going to allow be allowed 24 days before inspectors can access suspected nuclear sites. And what's even worse is yesterday Iran raised the stakes. You know, as a negotiator, you wrote the art of the deal many years ago, Donald. What they did was they got everything they wanted. So now they know we, they have tremendous strength. We have weakness. They raised the stakes yesterday. You know what they said in Iran? I'll tell you what. You want a soil sample to see if it has any uh, isotopic activity? We're going to provide you with the soil. You can't even take it out on your own. What kind of deal is this? In 24 days, Iran can hide weaponization activities, centrifuge manufacturing, centrifuge components, uranium stockpiles, missile components, and other things in 24 days. This is not a deal. This is a sellout, Donald, and you know it, and you've been speaking out on it. What's wrong with saying it, though? It's a disgrace, and how he allows this to happen. And what we should have done is increase the sanctions, doubled them up, and these people would have given us everything we wanted. It's such an embarrassment. Our country is so embarrassed by so many things. You know, one of the other things with the Iran deal, the, the chief negotiators are very smart. You know, the Persians have always been great negotiators, known great negotiators, the Iranians, the Persians. What happens is the, the chief negotiator goes back to Iran, and they're dancing and celebrating his big victory in the streets, okay? Because it's a total victory. But, you know, if you look at Iran, they're going to be wealthy. They're going to be powerful. They're going to have the nuclear weapons now. And it probably will lead to a whole nuclear all over the Middle East. I mean, it's probably going to be a proliferation all over the Middle East. It is one of the dumbest deals I've ever seen. It, it just So why, why, then Obama want, why did Obama push it so hard? Why does he need this deal? What is he seeking? Who can know? You know, I said he would look so great if he walked away from that table right now. I said that two weeks ago. I said it a month ago. The other thing, did you ever see a deal that took so long to get done? This deal went on forever. And that's called tapping. You know, I do that when I have a deal. I don't know if I want to make it. I might make it. I might. Not. So you tap the people. Oh, tap, tap, tap. It's called tapping. I guarantee you that during the tapping period, they have been working like hell to put up, you know, to, to do what they were trying to do which is pretty obvious to me as far as I'm concerned. But I don't think it even matters because this deal is so bad they can do whatever they want to do. Who's going to catch them? And don't forget, though, and I said it before, the 24 days takes a long time just to start the process, to, you know, to start the clock. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a very sad thing, Mike. It's so sad. It's so embarrassing, the whole thing. All right, wait a minute. So we've, ta we've touched on two issues. One is the problem of the surge of illegals. We've touched on voter identification. We've touched on the nuclear deal. You're a businessman. You're a great businessman. You're profitable. The question is, you once said run the nation like a business, which I agree with. And we have talked about putting tariffs on China, goods from China. Do you still think that's a good idea? Percent? Well, no, I don't like to do it unless they rip us off. And they've been ripping us off for years. We've rebuilt China. If you go to China... You will see bridges bigger than the George Washington Bridge being built all over the place. You're seeing highways that are so incredible. You'll see, you'll see airports. Look at our airports, Kennedy and LaGuardia, and you look at uh, LAX and Los Angeles and Newark. But they're like third world airports. And you yes. go to China and, by the way, other places. You go to Saudi Arabia, right. you go to Qatar, you go to Dubai. You go to places you, you've never seen anything. Now, Michael, unless you've been there, you won't even believe what you're seeing. And then you come home and you land at LaGuardia where they have potholes in the runway. <laughs> I know. It's just I know. It, lo so it, looks like a, it looks like Ella Street in San Francisco. I, I get it. The money, the money is snorted up somebody's nose. Donald Trump, everyone's saying uh, things about you that are untrue, and they're afraid that you're not in it for the long haul. We got over a year to go. You've got important businesses to run. 
I have a question for you. What about the millions, the tens of millions of Americans who have been excited by your campaign? Why is there no donation page where we can you know, help people contribute? You're a rich man, but you know this is going to cost a billion and a half dollars. You surely don't want to throw all of that out on your own. Are you considering having people donate money or not? Yeah, they, they do. I guess it's called Trump.com. But, but you know, I, I get it's so cute. I get a woman the other day. She sent me $7.11, which amounted to a percentage of her monthly something. A, a, an older woman, she said, Mr. Trump, I love you so much. This is, that was a lot of money for her. And I got the check. I don't know. Somehow I see this check. But people are sending a lot of money in. And I don't, honestly, I don't want the money. One of the nice things, I think one of the reasons uh, I'm doing so well, you know, Bush has raised over $100 million from people. I know. I know all those people. They're friends of mine. A lot of them friends of mine. Some are interviews of mine. But I know them all. <laughs> these are really powerful, smart, tough people. They don't give money, like, because it's a charity. They give money because they want something. When Bush has over $100 million, when Hillary has over $50 million, everybody that gave millions of dollars is getting a lot for that. They're yeah, going to get all yeah. sorts of things. And in a lot of cases, it's very bad for the country. Good for them, good for their companies, but bad for the country. Wait, so, wait, so you're you know, saying that you don't want donations because you don't want to be beholden to contributors, but small contributors don't want anything back, Donald? Michael, one man offered five in here. They want to put millions in. I, don't, I said, don't do it because I don't want to have in a position where someday you're going to need. I want to do what's right. You know, I have the expression, make America great again. I want to make America great again. I can do it. And you know what? If it keeps going the way it's going, Michael, you're never going to have that chance again. That's how bad it is. So you're willing to blow one and a half billion dollars of your own money to become president? Well, I'll, I'll be to see what happens. Number one, I'm doing really well so far. You know, I'm in, I'm, I guess they say I'm leading in all the polls. Let's see what happens. Okay, long long way to go. It's a long. Right, so we've touched we've touched on the monetary aspects. Is there anything else you'd like to give out to the Savage Nation? Because I know your time is limited. You're on every show in the world. We all love what you're saying, and of course, the smearers are smearing around the clock while letting Obama get away with virtual murder, giving Iran a nuclear weapon, etc. Anything else you want to leave the audience with, perhaps when we come back? Can you hold a few minutes, Donald, and close it out with that? Okay, I'll hold. Okay, thank you. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I'm Michael Savage. I am not a journalist. I'm a talk show host. I have strong opinions. Donald Trump is with us. Donald, we have very little time. What would you like to leave the audience with today on the Savage Nation? Well, we have to strengthen our military. We have to absolutely take care of our vets, Mike. Our vets are treated so badly, so horribly, it's ridiculous. And we have to get rid of Obamacare. I mean, there's so much to do. There's so much to do. And we have to do it quickly because we're not going to have much time if we keep going this way. It's not going to be, you're not going to be able to bring it back. So we have to go. This is a very important election. This is maybe the most important election we've ever had. So, you well, know, I hope, I hope you're in it for the long haul. Donald, I really hope you're in it for the long haul. And as I said at the beginning, and I'll say it again, go, Donald, go. I support your candidacy. No one's going to get, you know, I love the purest, Donald, the popes of conservatism who say you're not really conservative, you're not this, you're too weak on that, you're almost conservative, you might be, and you're, you know, to you is, the fact is no one's going to give them 100% of the pure vision they have for the George Washington that never existed. So as far as I'm concerned, you're the standard bearer. You're the only hope we have. You're the lion that we have been waiting for. You're the Winston Churchill of our time. And I pray to God that you're in it for the long haul. I ask only one thing in return for supporting you, Donald. When you become president, I want to run the NIH and clean it out and put real scientists into it. No, that's Joking. Very good. That's very well. We have a, sport, have a smart man in charge, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> Donald Thanks. Trump, God bless you. Keep it up. Don't let them get you down, as they said. Uh, uh, you know, there's an old saying from old ancient Rome, which I don't think I can say, which is non cabarundi. You know that one? Non, non cabarundum. Illegitimi non cabarundum. I learned it in high school. Donald, thank you. Thank you very much. Keep hitting him real hard. They need it. Illegitimi non cabarundum on the Savage Nation. In the third hour, you're going to hear me talk about many things, including an immigrant son comes full circle. Yours truly, Michael Savage. The only immigrant son in the media. That's right. You heard it. Not Martha Washington, but me. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is our number three, The Savage Nation. It's a great interview. Donald Trump was Donald Trump. We asked him some real questions. I didn't get exactly the answers I wanted, but I didn't expect to get the answers I wanted. But I got some answers. I asked him, would you use an executive action to establish strict voter ID laws in the U.S. if you're president? He said something needs to be done, but he wouldn't commit to that. I asked him, would you impose, uh, I think, uh, it's not so much sanctions as a, sort of a tax on goods made in China. And I think he said yes. What would you do to stop Iran from getting a bomb? There are important points that were covered. I think it was a useful interview. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to ask you a question. Then I'm going to clean up some, uh, I have some housekeeping to do on the program. How did you like the interview? That's all plain English. This is old radio. This is what I used to do. I'd have a guest on who I thought was great, and then we would talk about the guest, whether you liked it or not. So how did you like the interview? The phone number is 800. I don't know the number. I forgot my phone number. I don't remember it. I can't remember my own number anymore. It's something. It's an 888. I don't know my number. What is my number? Put it up on the board. I put it on the board. Don't talk to me. And uh, number two, you can make contributions at DonaldJTrump.com. Remember I asked them, can people contribute? And it, the, 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 the exact address is DonaldJTrump.com. DonaldJTrump.com. Again, the phone number here is I don't know. But this is the Savage Nation that I know, and I'm Michael. That's number two. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling that. At the end of July, we're about to enter August. We don't know whether Donald's in it for the long haul. We also know the media, which is smearing him day and night, is not saying one word about Obama's wreckage of the United States of America. And I'm going to ask you again, what are the five things that Obama has done to most damage America? Also in this hour, we're going to play for you, I think, a tape I love from last summer entitled An Immigrant Son Comes Full Circle because I want you to understand that what you're hearing from me is, is, is unique in the American media today. And I'm not alone. You know, many immigrants agree with me. This is the shocking truth that the so-called progressives will never let you know. Most immigrants to America want immigration control because they don't want the cesspool that they left to be recreated on these shores. Do you understand that? Do you understand what I just said to you? Do you think they ran away from El Salvador to live in El Salvador? You think they ran away from Guatemala to live in Guatemala? Do you think they're leaving Mexico because they want to live in a corrupt narco state? No. And so, although many of them are illegal, many of them are not. Let me remind you of that. And, and don't get confused about this issue. There's something, again, that's being lost in all of this. And the people who are most uncomfortable about this immigration debate going on in America now, which is almost at a fever pitch, is that many Hispanics have been here longer than most of the white people who s seem to think that they were here first. You don't know that. Three, four generations, incidentally. You don't know anything about that. They're actually more threatened by the Ill illegal immigration surge than people without Hispanic surnames, incidentally. But you, you don't know any of this. These are the subtleties. 855-407-282. Why do you love Donald Trump? Why do you think women, I, I, here's another one. Here's, you ready for this one? And now that I think about it, now that I'm high on an energy drink and a turkey leg, which I was eating uh, before the interview, I found a new salvation for my show now, which is a turkey leg, a hot turkey leg in the middle of the show. I've given up Asian food, poison, garbage. It's nothing but rice and cat food. You know, I don't know. What's in that stuff? Salt and your legs blow up. So I'm eating a, a pure turkey leg because it's American. I think the turkeys are grown in America. I don't know, but that's an American meal. Turkey and a potato, what could be better? But in all seriousness, we have a lot to worry about. Obama is coming back. It's a shame. I mean, he loves Africa so much. I, I hate to say it, but maybe he'd be happier there if he stayed. 
Maybe he'd be happier if he stayed over there. He could help find Cecil the Lion's killer. He's over there. I mean, he's such a do-gooder. Maybe he could find a dentist who killed the lion. Maybe he can join the hunt or lead the hunt. I mean, he knows everything else. The American dentist is wanted. He's in hiding. We don't know where he is. Maybe Obama can help find him because he knows how to do everything else so well. He knows how to give Iran the bomb. He knows how to flood America with illegal aliens. He knows how to break the economy. He knows how to print money. I mean, maybe he can find a dentist. You never know. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Donald Trump is beating Jeb Bush by six points in Florida. Incidentally, it's a big story. Trump leads GOP field among Hispanics, which I predicted would happen against uh, the better the better wisdom of all the progressives you know who have a blog guys a blog with 300 followers he's already a genius on on fox news i have a blog a daily blog for 21 years it's called the savage nation audience is large it's large it's a large audience you don't know that because the media has smeared me and try to marginalize me and say oh his audience doesn't no one listens there well, if no one listens to me, why is the show still on the air? And if no one listens to me, why is the show so big? And if no one listens to me, why are my books bestsellers? And if no one listens to me, why are my bestsellers such a threat that the New York Times would not even list Countdown to Mecca as a bestseller when it beats three other books if I'm nobody? And so listen to me. It's an important show. It's important to me. It's important to you. It's important to Teddy who's my personal, I'm calling him Cecil now. I've given Teddy the lion's name in honor of the lion that was killed by that cowardly skunk, that dentist who, who should be hunted down in the, in the savannah of, uh, he should be like a naked and afraid. They should strip him and free him on the, on the savannah in, uh, in the area of lions. And let him run from the lions naked and afraid or throw him in a Zimbabwe prison for 10 years for poaching. And then maybe the trophy will be uh, someone else's instead of the lion's head. You know, no, strip him and throw him in the wood. You know, there was a movie years ago that I loved. I forget the name of it. What was that movie? I can't remember the actor. Oh, uh, you remember where um, the guy is a hunter? Who can remember this movie? I'll give you a free book. If any, it was Cornell Wilde. Now they'll look it up on the I ISDN or whatever, ISBN, IMDB. I can't remember the actor. Cornell Wilde did a great movie. It was about white hunters in Africa who get captured by Africans and the Africans kill some of them in the most horrible ways imaginable. Like they cook a guy in, uh, this was the most horrible torture I've ever seen in my life. They took one of the white hunters and they wrapped them in mud. They put wet mud on him over his whole body. And then they put breathing tubes into the nostrils and the mouth so he could breathe. As the mud hardened around the fat hunter, it became, in essence, a clay oven. Can you believe this? And a guy's screaming inside the clay oven. He's tied up. And, of course, he can still breathe, so he's not dead. And then they put him over a fire, and they slow cook him. I said, oh, my God. Then the next one they did something else to. Now Cornell Wilde, because he was nice to one of the Africans, they don't kill him right away. They strip him, and they leave him a pair of sandals, and they release him into the savannah, and they give him a head start with no weapons to run away, and then they send three... Uh, hunters after him, African hunters with spears and bows. And the whole movie is about the chase. Does anyone know the name of that movie? Someone knows it. I don't know them. Whatever. I would say that that's a fair way to treat the American dentist. Maybe you can give him some laughing gas before he goes so he can laugh all his, all his way along the savannah. Naked Prey. Bingo. The Naked Prey. What a movie. I love that movie. That's an amazing movie. Most people living uh, in cities today feel like that. <laughs> if they don't have a conceal and carry, they feel like Cornell Wilde and Naked Brain. God, it's terrible. I'm on a diet, a no-carb diet right now. I feel like I'm on Naked and Afraid every day. I wake up, I'm like starving. I feel like the... You ever watch that show on Nat Geo, Naked and Afraid? I like that show. It's not because I'm looking at the bodies. Come on, that's not the thing. It's like a weird show. They drop two people... In the, I, I don't know, the outback of this country, Guatemala, this country, that, Nicaragua, with nothing. Not even a pair of sandals, not even a pair of shorts, not a brassiere, nothing to cover them. And they're supposed to, one, they're allowed to carry one tool each. One guy picks an axe, the other one picks a fire starter. And the girls are tougher than the guys in most cases. And they, they go out there for 21 days, they have to survive on their own wits. And these are survivalists. And, you know, they start to starve to death after two days. They start to cry, some of them. 
That's how I'm feeling on the new non-carbohydrate diet. I wake. I, w I was so upset over it. I started to laugh on my bicycle yesterday. I got a kick out of it. I said, thank God my sense of humor kicked in. People must think I'm crazy. I start to laugh while I'm bicycling. Which is, uh, when my mother said it's not so bad if you talk to yourself as long as you don't start answering yourself. She said, if you start answering yourself, you're in trouble. Talking to yourself is okay. So far, no answering. So anyway, I call my dog Cecil in honor of the lion killed by the dentist. And he lays on the floor during the show. And he's got such a trick now. Then I'll get back to Trump. His latest trick is, because he's a little poodle that's uncut. He looks like a lion. Actually, I have him trimmed like a lion. Everyone says he looks like a mini lion. He's a little gray lion. He likes to sleep during the show, as do most listeners. And he doesn't like light in his eyes, obviously, because he can't snooze. But he doesn't have the luxury of wearing a hat or eye shades. So he flips his hair over his eyes. <laughs> I swear to God. So his eyes don't show. And he does it to block the light. I realize it because when I come over to him during a break and I say, Cecil, how are you, my little lion? He doesn't move. And then I brush the hair off his eyes. And he looks up like, what are you bothering me for? Didn't you read the adage, let sleeping dogs lie? Can you let me alone for a few minutes? Anyway, Teddy's going to have his own book in a year. The same publisher who brought you um, Stop the Coming Civil War and is going to give you Government Zero. My uh, publisher is crazy about dogs and crazy about Teddy. And it's sent to Street Books, and they sent the photographer out this weekend, and we did a whole photo shoot. I hope there'll be another one because I realize there's scenes we missed. 855-407-282. Let's begin with Celia on line number two from LWI Radio. Celia, how did you like the interview with Donald Trump? I loved it. I, um, I love Trump, love you, but I will vote for him. I don't care what kind of garbage they try to pass off on us because he's the man. So far. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. Of, co of course he's not 100% what anyone wants, but he's better than Jeb Bush. He's better than most of them, isn't he? But more than that, even though Ted Cruz has very good ideas and I respect him, he can't win. He doesn't have the charisma to be president. That's my opinion. We need a candidate who could actually win. Walker doesn't have the charisma. None of them really have the horsepower. That's what I think. Will not take any. I mean, Bush. Forget that. You put him in the mind. Uh, but as a woman, I want to ask you something. As a woman, do you think women are attracted to Trump because he's so masculine? I do. He takes nothing from nobody. He is. See, I, I don't think anyone's analyzed this. Trump has enormous popularity amongst women, which is why they smeared him with this false rape accusation the other day, trying to suck off the woman vote. Uh, because Hillary is terrified that her core constituency will move over to Trump because she is nothing but a guava on the jungle floor to them. They don't like her. She is old fruit rotting on the jungle floor. That, most women don't like Hillary. Why, just because she's a woman, they have to like her? I don't, I don't understand the logic of that. I don't like Where's the logic in, in it? Because she's a woman. What, she's electable because she's a woman? Where does that work? How does that work? We got Nancy Pelosi. How'd that work out for America? We got Barbara Boxer, Dianne Feinstein, Barbara Mikulski. They're really great women just because they're women, because they're not men. They're great politicians. Stupid. I can't believe I've blown through 19 minutes. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We're talking about Donald Trump on the Savage Nation, but there's so much, there's so much other stuff I want to get to. A crazy university has put out a booklet saying the word American is offensive. The psychopaths have taken over all the universities. You can't use the word American now, they say, because it's not inclusive. This is how sick America has become. This is a nation that's dying because no one will stand up to these perverted psychopaths in plain English. There's no other words for it. I can't. I'm an unvarnished guy. The perverted psychopaths who have raped the universities with their left-wing fanaticism have now raped the language. They have to be stopped. These, these psychopaths have to be stopped. And the reason they're out of control is because we have a psycho in the White House. He's basically giving them license. You don't understand how this works. When you have a psycho in the White House getting away with virtually anything he wants, the little psychos at the university level 
Say, oh, you know what? I can do it too. You have planned infanticide. I can do it too. Because no one will stop them. You know, a fish rots from the head down. You know how it works, right? KSFO, Michael, fire away. Did you like the Trump interview or not? Hey, thanks, Mike, for having me on. Yes, I loved it very much. It was uh, very, very good. Um, I think he speaks for all Americans that are just uh, what they're really thinking in their heart. You know, we're tired of the scripted uh, speeches and stuff that's written by someone else, and you can see it. So, so in other words, what I'm hearing is we're not sure of where he stands on certain things, but we know he tilts to the conservative side. He has good instincts on the conservative side, and that he speaks from the heart, not from a teleprompter, and that's good enough for us in a, in a world of, of, uh, of, of let's say, uh, you know, points that are written for them. Every word they say is, is scripted. By the way, it's very interesting. Ted Cruz would not come on this show. None of them have ever come on this show. You know that or not, Michael? And by the way, my producers asked them over two years ago, none of them would come near the show, including the great Rubio. And I was a resident of Florida for a while. Even when he was a senator, he wouldn't come on the Savage Nation. So what does that tell you about them? They're all phonies. How come Trump dares come on the show? I didn't embarrass him, did I? No, no. This is the first time uh, I've caught your show. Um, I didn't even know who you were. I was listening to the show, and I was like, wow, i got to call in. I love this show. Who is this? All right, well, there you go. Great. Well, now you know. i got a new listener on the Savage Nation every day. Every day on the local station you're listening on, on the West Coast, 12 until 3 o'clock. So there you go. Brand new listener. That's all. Walk away cocktail. Step right up. Fisherman's Wharf on the radio. Step right up. Walk away cocktail. Go ahead. Fisherman's Wharf. Step right up. Walk away cocktail. Right here on the Savage Nation. Some affair. Okay, when I come back, more about Trump and the, the news and, and Obama in Africa, the speeches he's giving. You're not going to believe this. What this guy, well, you'll see. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. The immigration problem, then you got the Iran problem. Do you have the fiscal problem? You have the social problem. You have the moral problem. You have the ethical problem. You have the corruption problem. But everything's fine because the magic man is in charge. Can you imagine if the country had these issues right now with a conservative in the White House? Can you imagine what these brave men at Politico and the other esteemed denizens of journalism would be saying. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? Officer indicted Ohio cop faces murder charge in traffic shooting. A Cincinnati campus cop officer, Ray Tensing, white man, who shot Samuel Dubow, black man, when he pulled him over for a missing front license plate earlier this month is indicted on murder charges. And a prosecutor said he purposely killed his victim and should never have been a police officer. Wow. Where is Al Sharpton now that we don't need him? I mean, he was just in and out of the White House a hundred times. This is made for him. You know, arm and arm, locked arm and arm, marching we shall overcome, and marching all the way to the bank. Just like what I talked to you about in the last hour. There's money everywhere you turn. There's money to be made. And don't, don't fool yourself. Don't think there's no money being made in the civil rights movement. Don't fool yourself for one minute. Here's another little breaking news story. Illegal immigrant ordered freed, now murder suspect. Oh, yeah. Another wonderful immigrant. Illegal immigrant ordered freed by a judge, now suspected of murder in Ohio. Murdered one woman, wounded another, attempted to rape. A 14-year-old was released earlier this month by Ohio sheriff's deputies after U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents told them not to hold him. Juan Emanuel Razo was arrested Monday after a shootout with police following a crime spree that began with the attempted rape of a girl in a park northeast of Cleveland. Then he shoots a woman in front of her children. Then he murders a 60-year-old woman in nearby Concord Township. Are you listening to this? Authorities are trying to explain why he was allowed to remain in the U.S. illegally after local authorities questioned him just three weeks ago. Are you listening to this? He went on a murder spree and a rape spree. A murder and rape spree. Take a look at the doll, Juan Emanuel Razo. Raped, murdered, shot, 40-year-old woman in the arm as she walked with her two children along a bike path. An hour after that, a man told park rangers he found his wife, 60-year-old Margaret Kostelnik, shot to death in their home near the bike path. There's more, 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 but no, they all come here to work. 
They were all such sterling citizens. And he didn't just give up. No, he didn't just give up. He, uh, he fought with the police, got into a shootout. They're the ones who have to deal with the human refuse that all of you think are just statistics. They are the ones who are on the front lines of the war that Obama has created. Make no mistake about it. And by the way, speaking about illegal aliens and murder, remember Kate? She was killed in San Francisco on the waterfront by an illegal alien who had a gun. And the gun belonged to a federal agent. Whatever happened to that story? Why was that hush-hushed? How did that illegal alien sitting on the bench get that gun that he said went off as he was shooting sea lions? And why is the sheriff in San Francisco still in, in his position? Where is the answer to that question? Where did he get that gun? Say sorry on KSFO Radio. Thanks for calling. What's on your mind tonight? Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Oh, Dr. Savage, I'm a, I'm a new listener. Um, regarding Trump's interview, I think uh, he's just being a straightforward person. They're taking, they taking, taking a lot of his stuff out of context. I'm, I'm Spanish myself. My mom came here from Nicaragua in the 70s, and I became naturalized. Actually, I became naturalized when I was in Afghanistan. And when I, when I listened to Donald Trump talk on, the, on either an interview or in the news or whichever, People take things out of context. He's not a racist guy going after every single Hispanic. He's going after no, of course, of course not. You know that. We all, we all know that. When you, when you say you were in Afghanistan, I heard you. You were in the military? Yes, sir. See, you didn't wear it on your sleeve. You didn't start by saying, I'm a veteran and a Hispanic. You just said it along the way. I mean, you're really a noble guy. You really are. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I mean, you didn't, you didn't wear it as a weapon. You know, and I get that. And, and that's the thing. And, and, you know, you as a gentleman of your heritage understand where he's coming from. The man only wants to protect America. Uh, he has nothing against Hispanic people as the progressives, as the communists, rather, would have you believe. By the way, when, when, have, when have you seen progressive invite Hispanics home for dinner? Have you seen any do that recently? No, not really. And the funny part about it is that those people live in their own bubble. They use, they use these people, the, the simple tongue and the... And, and I wouldn't even say middle class because there's not even middle class. Now it's just basically you're almost like borderline poor or you in some sort of like public public assistance kind of deal. But the fact is, like, while those people are playing with people's lives here, like how the normal everyday person works, they get to go home in a place that's far away from the realities of the ghetto, uh, 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 drug and violent infested neighborhoods that, where they wouldn't show up there unless they have a bunch of bodyguards. But then Amen. Amen. But they're all experts on your people. I get it. They all love your people very much, but they want nothing to do with them. And they, they're, they're first to say that anyone who opposes illegal immigration is a racist. That's their game. So look, my friend, thank you for your service to America and for listening to the Savage Nation. Let me send you a copy of a book. I know you're going to love this summer called Countdown to Mecca, which incidentally is still selling very well. Let's go to the next caller on the Savage Nation. They're calling from all over the country on this on the Trump interview. And if you missed it, as many of you will, because you work or you're doing this or that, uh, I'm going to MP3 it, meaning I'm going to put the tape up on my website at the end of the day, michaelsavage.com. It'll be Donald Trump on Michael Savage, period. And I know many of you also want to hear the piece I did, which was, I think, something unique in them, and not think, who makes billions off the illegal aliens. That unto itself is a Pulitzer Prize winning piece. Also, I'll give it to you for free on the MP3. And if you want to actually get it in writing, you can get it in my forthcoming book in October called Government Zero, which is on Amazon right now, moving up the charts, even though it's a long way from publication. And that will be my last nonfiction book. Uh, so far as I can tell, I'm through. Next is a dog book, journal book, book of my journals in, my, in the 60s when I was a young man from 19... Uh, I'm working on that with WND for next winter, uh, it's uh, what you won't believe the secret journals of Michael Savage. It's unbelievable looking at those pictures of myself when I was 20, 22 years old as a college boy hanging out with the guys, the cars. Some of them are amazing pictures. It's when I was a different person in a way. And really, we're all the same person. If you look at I don't want to get ahead of myself. I can't get into it. I can't get into it. So let's go back to the Trump thing right now. I want to stay focused if I can. It's very hard for me to stay focused because. I have so many different ideas bubbling up from the volcano <laughs> at all times. It's very hard to focus them into one giant bubble, but we'll stick to the Trump bubble for now. 
And Cesar is a lucky recipient of Countdown to Mecca. Thanks for that call. Bob on WABC, it looks like you weren't so happy with Donald's visit. Go ahead. You've got the floor. Yeah, I wasn't even positive I was going to get on. How you doing? Uh, I, I just, I, I, don't get me wrong, I like, I like Trump. I think he's probably our best chance at the moment. But I, I noticed you asked him that first question about identification and stuff. And, and you asked him the first time, and I, and I felt sort of like he gave a, a beat around, almost like any Republican would. He didn't ask Yes, I asked him a point. I told you I'd ask him the question. I didn't mince words. I said, Donald, would you use an executive action to establish strict voter ID laws in the U.S.? He didn't answer it. He said something needs to be done. That was, a, that was his answer. I heard that, Bob. Yeah, I, I, but I, I just I felt the answer you gave before he even came on when you were talking about it, was you said, let's at least step up to Mexico's standards. Yeah, right. I, because to vote in Mexico, every single el eligible Mexican has to have a tamper-proof photo ID card with a thumbprint and an embossed hologram. All citizens of Mexico are required to personally enroll and show proof of birth of citizenship. And so I said, why can't we just upgrade to Mexican standards of voting? I, mean, I would ask that of every Republican candidate, incidentally, not just Trump. Let's try it out on on the Jeb Bush the next time he opens himself up to questions on a show. I doubt anyone will ask him that. You're spot on. I agree with you 110 percent. All right, Bob, right on from WABC in New York. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Lisa on WBAP in Dallas, Texas. Now on the Savage Nation to be heard by millions. What's on your mind, Lisa? I just wanted to call. I'm a new listener. I listened to your Donald Trump interview. I think he's fabulous. I love that his slogan is, Make America Great. It reminds me of Ronald Reagan's slogan, Let's Make America Great Again. Um, and I think the reason he can answer the executive action question that you asked him is because he has no intentions of abusing it, like the fascists we have living in the White House right now. Yeah, I like the word fascist that applies. You see, if it walks like a fascist, if it talks like a fascist, and it acts like a fascist, what else can you apply to the word, to the individual? I have never in my life, and I've been involved in politics, I was the precinct captain of the 8th Congressional District in Butler County, Ohio, the same one as John Boehner's when I was 18 years old. And I used to be, Ted, I was Ted Kennedy's delegate in 1980. Oh, you're an, old, you're, an old, you're an old Democrat liberal. So you know what liberalism is, and you can see that Obama's not a liberal. Exactly. No, he, he's a, well, he's a, he's a... Yeah, we know what he is. We know exactly how dangerous he is. And no matter how they spin this guy, every time he speaks, it gets more and more, def definitely more and more eerie. And yeah. by the way, we have such a long way to go before this man is out of the White House. We have such a long way to go, Lisa. Thank you for that call. I haven't gotten to this. I don't think I will, but his speech in Africa today or yesterday was shocking. I think we'll play one of the clips because I want to play all of it because it's the big whopper. This is the big whopper, and it's unbelievable to listen to this rubbish. Here is the President of the United States pandering to Africans in clip 10. Listen to this Robert Fireaway clip 10. This is the cradle of humanity. In ancient African kingdoms, we're home to great libraries and universities. What? But the evil of slavery took root. Oh, God. Not only abroad. Again, but here agitation. on the continent. Oh, my God. Hate. Colonialism skewed Africa's economy Hate. and robbed people Hate. of their capacity to shape their own destiny. Here is a man who is a community organizer on the world stage trying to agitate race against race. He is a, an agitator. He's not a leader. Make no mistake about it. This is a street agitator like Al Sharpton, who is now in Africa trying to turn black Africans again against white people. And secondly, he's lying. Or let's say parsing the truth, which he's famous for. Let's look at the statement. The cradle of humanity, well, maybe... And ancient African kingdoms were home to great libraries and universities? Well, he means in Egypt. But Egypt was not in sub-Saharan Africa where he is now speaking. And to speak about Africa, including Egypt, maybe is geographically correct, but it's not exactly what he was implying, was it? 
because there were no great libraries and universities in Kenya, so far as I know, until the evil white man came and built libraries and universities. And that's a fact. And by the way, Mr. Obama, if you want to get your facts straight, there was a great library in Africa, that is in Egypt, in Alexandria to be specific, and it was torched and all the books burned when the Muslims invaded Egypt and converted the people into Muslims. First they burned the library because they believed in the sufficiency of a single book called the Quran. Mr. Obama, I think it's important that you get your historical facts straight, especially since you're leader of the free world, the most powerful man in the world. It's a shame that you have to spread lies when there's no need to do so. I'll be right back. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Um, I want to summarize. Earlier in the show, I did Who Makes Billions Off the Illegal Aliens. It was a masterpiece. It's worthy of a Pulitzer Prize. You're going to find it on michaelsavage.com later tonight. It is going to be published in Government Zero, which is on Amazon now. I suspect it will be stolen by others before it's published, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the fact is, is that it's an excellent article, and it shows you who's making money off the illegals. And you'll be shocked to find out it's both Republicans and Democrats, which is why they're in favor of amnesty. And I mean blanket amnesty. Also, the Trump interview will be up on michaelsavage.com. And before the night comes to a close and you turn off the radio to do other things, most normal people turn the radio off on the East Coast at 6 o'clock and have dinner and do other things. I don't want you to misinterpret any of what I said today. For, for the president to be in Africa and be trying to steam up hatred towards the white man is a continuation of what he's done in this country. Look how well it's worked for him. It's a damn shame that this man is not called on the carpet for what he is doing domestically and abroad. But having said that, he also lied when he said that Africa was home to great libraries and universities. Well, technically he's right if you include Egypt, but it's not in sub-Saharan Africa, and that's a big distinction, because Egyptian culture was quite different than that of Kenya or Zimbabwe, etc. Very important differential and something you need to know. And again, having said that, there's another caveat I have to uh, enter at this time which is that the Arabic mind is a fabulous intelligence that was once intimately involved with the advancement of humanity and civilization. When the Arabic mind came into contact with Christian doctrines, the Greeks, the Jewish minds, new things occurred in the world and better things. And soon the Arabs, soon after their conquests, dropped the intolerance and the intolerant self-sufficiency of the early days of faith where they thought the Quran was the only possible book and they dropped it in the 9th to 10th century. And right now we have retrograde Arabs who are espousing an 8th century view of Islam which hates every other religion and is intolerant of every other religion. They have taken the world back to the 8th century. It is a toxic poison. And it's come out of Saudi Arabia, by the way. It is the Wahhabi school of Islam that has poisoned the entire world. You may think Saudi Arabia is your friend, but make no mistake about it. It's Wahhabism that has poisoned Islam. Take that to the bank. I'm Michael Savage.